I'm delighted to have the opportunity to meet and speak with Tawana Norwood. Tawana, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm really well. Thank you so much for joining me here. I have had a chance. I saw you on Instagram and I got a chance to see that you're passionate about yoga and that you're also are in the military. And I'm always excited to speak with people that are serving our country on the level that you are and also um, passionate about yoga. I think it's a great combo. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, uh, where are you? Where are you currently? I am currently in Washington, D.C., and like physically, I'm in the Pentagon uh, gym right now. Gotcha. Nice. For those of you that are listening, if you want to watch on YouTube, you can see what the Pentagon gym looks like. <laughs> <laughs> the mirrors, I see some like maybe bolsters hanging from the wall in the back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. So I'm fortunate that I was able to be able to do the interview here. That's cool. How long have you been in the military? I've been in the military for seven years. Gotcha. And where are you from originally? I'm originally from Miami-Dade County. I always have to specify because uh, some people say Miami, but there's a different location in Florida. Gotcha. Like, what is the difference? Miami-Dade, I know I know Miami quite well, but I'm curious, like, what, where, do, where else could we be put if we say we're from Miami? So in college uh, and also in the military, I encountered this a lot. And this is like my uh, soapbox. So people would be from Broward County, actually, but they would just say they're from Miami because uh -huh. people know about Miami more. So if you say Miami-Dade County, oh, I didn't anticipate the lights turned off. Yeah, <laughs> no I way. apologize. So if you no. say Miami-Dade County, people will know more or it kind of makes it seem more official, official like actually. Yeah, that's uh, a good point. It sounds like you're proud to be from Miami. I love Miami. I am proud. Yeah, that's cool. And um, what what was your first yoga experience and where? My first yoga experience was more of a stretching experience, and it was actually in high school. So I joined the track team, and I started um, a stretch program, a stretch routine, because I wanted to um, – Get, I wanted to maintain flexibility because I was like, oh, it seems like I'm recovering from my workouts better and maintaining because of the stretching. So that was the first time I got introduced to stretching. And then when I got to college or after I graduated college, I um, I looked into it more and then went more of the yoga route of it as a more structured. But between high school and the time period, period um when I learned where it was a more structured practice I still practice it either way I still stretch throughout yeah that's cool was was your first yoga experience like in a like I, I know I can understand the distinction between like a stretching class and like a proper yoga practice was it in a studio was it online or was it through a book what was your First My first moment. experience was actually at a public library. It was a free yoga session um, that I had went to in college and then, or not college, after college. And I thought it was a pretty cool experience. I was like, um, I had never, outside of being a part of a track team, I never had been with a group of people stretching at once. So I liked the environment. And in particular, I liked the respect that they put on the stretching. Um, and I also liked the deeper aspects. So it wasn't just stretching, but it was the meditation. It was the uh, purple purposefulness behind it. Um, I, cool. It was just a group of like-minded people. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. Nice. Yeah, that's really cool. That that is interesting to think about the distinction between like, I'm just going to stretch versus that there's like, I like the fact you use the word like respect for the the pose too, or like there was some sort of like, check out this posture. There's a name to it and there's like mm -hmm. a way to, yeah, that's cool. Did you, did you run track in college? I ran for a club team. So I wasn't the, I wasn't the most competitive when it came to running, but I still had a passion and a drive for it. Um, actually, it was it kind of ties into like my Instagram name. Like I I ran in high school. I didn't like win any awards or anything, but I felt that I could be better. And so I just kept trying to run and pursue things related to running because I wanted to be my best. Um 
I felt like I hadn't given my best. There was more that I could give out of myself, which is how I came up with the best I can be. I kind of took that persona on um, for the rest of like my um, life. That's cool. Did you, were you able to achieve the best you uh, can I, made, <laughs> I made a couple of achievements running with the club team. I still, I didn't make anything like super noteworthy, but personally, I think that, um, I think the, I think I came to the realization that it wasn't a moment that was the achievement. It was the fact that I was still willing to pursue it, nice. um, that I didn't give up on it. That was my achievement that, because mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, I felt like I had greatness in me. And once I got it, it stopped. It was the greatness was that I was willing to keep going. And um, that was my biggest strength. Yeah, very cool. Did um, we're recording this like a, just a couple of days after the Olympics closed. Did you watch track and field on the Olympics? I definitely did. That was the highlight of the last few weeks um, or like week or so was watching the track and field. I always love the Olympics, I always love um, because I always follow track. But then now just something about the Olympic stage makes other people watch it, enjoy it and um, celebrate it like I do. And then you get more access to it because any other time it's kind of hard to find. You have to look it up on YouTube or yeah look at old pictures but here it was readily available on a big stage yeah so cool what was was there a moment or a particular runner that really inspired you this year or this this time around I'm glad you asked that question because there is something about this Olympics and um, I would say it was made very noticeable to me during track and field I was inspired by the amount of affirmations all the athletes had like you would see them about to ha take on this big feat and you would see their self-talk, like no one else is around them. So clearly they yeah. talk it to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I have a, a Christian background and then, you know, with yoga affirmations, um, it just, it was like a powerful moment where connected, like here are some of the greatest athletes in the world on this huge stage. And they're putting this into practice. It must work is what I was thinking. Mm. And it was just the biggest inspiration because it was just so powerful to see them. Like I was watching a pole vaulter and she was like saying, you can do it, do this, this, this. And um, it was affirmations and it was visualization because you could tell some of them were running through what they were going to do and stuff like that. So um, that's the biggest thing I took away. And I, I would note a second thing. There was this one runner who she said she never won a high school athletics award. Sorry for the lights. And oh, she no never, way. she had never um, won on a college level, the biggest award. Uh, and the only award kind of that she ever got was an Olympic gold medal. It was the Olympic gold medal. Uh, I think it was hundred meter hurdler. And that was powerful too, because uh, we're not always recognized on every level, but the level we need to be is going to happen for us if we don't give up. Oh man, I love that. Mm -hmm. one, I think one of my favorite moments was uh, Shikari Richardson. Mm -hmm. is that, did I get her name right? I think I did. She, Shikari. Shikari. Shikari, I'm so sorry. Sorry, Shikari. Shakiri, when she made that look over to her right, like, oh, yeah. her front, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> that, that is so inspirational. I was like, she had it. She totally mm -hmm. had it. Yeah, that was amazing. Well, that's mm -hmm. cool. And so what are your thoughts on yoga being in the Olympics? Would you I support think... that? Would you support that idea? Or do you think we should keep that separate? You know, just I guess I would thing? say I never considered that. How would how would we make it competitive? And does it align with our purpose for it to be competitive is what I think about. Yeah. Good. But I do think that, and it's probably based on athletes and countries, I think it could be a part of it and probably is in terms of recovery and preparation, maybe like offering it for as a element in the Olympic village or so. Yeah. I heard one person argue the pro for bringing yoga into the Olympics was uh, that like, if I have, if I'm a young, if I'm young and I'm watching a sport and I have an idol or a hero, that's really good at the sport that that inspires so many children or so many people to actually take up the sport that they were saying, if we could somehow get 
yoga into the Olympics that would provide role models for younger people that would be looking up to them and, and also obviously put it on the world stage where people would, you know, think of it as uh, a, like a legit, legitimate thing. But I also agree what you're saying in terms of like, do we want to do that? Like if we have something that's like kind of personal and private, do we, would we want to make it a competition? I, I think I, I stand, I lean more towards that side. And I think in order for us to accomplish what that individual was referring to, I think it would be more so of like, uh, because yoga and stretching go so hand in hand and stretching and athletics are really close together. I think it's just a matter of people, those athletes, those big name professionals who do do yoga, stepping out more into the forefront and being those ro role models, putting out imagery of the themselves doing it because so many people on every level do practice it it's just um exposure or putting marketing it putting it out there yeah, yeah. um so I think that's what it would be especially like college athletic programs I think that's one of my dreams to go be a like a college athletic yoga instructor very cool mm -hmm. awesome great dream how did you so you went where uh you went to college what did you major in when you went to school I actually majored in sociology, um, nice. the study of people, and it worked wow. out. Uh, I, I went in as an English major and then realized that wasn't what I wanted. And I was, it was kind of challenging for me. I had a lot of imposter syndrome, fear of failure, and I would go to write an essay and I would just, it would take me hours. I was so, I was so hard on myself. So then I ended up switching. I wanted to do psychology. Um, but it was a bit too much math. So I ended up doing um, sociology, just stumbling upon it. And I, I really enjoyed it. I was fortunate enough to choose a lot of the essay topics. I'm not sure if that always happens in majors, but I focused a lot on um, actually athletics and the role of sports in society. So it ended up being, um, it ended up relating to something I was very passionate about. That's cool. At what point did you decide that you wanted to pursue being in the military? So when I was um, growing up in Miami, so yes, Miami-Dade County, but in particular, <laughs> I grew up in a part of Miami known as Liberty City. Uh, Miami is really changing now, but at that time and um, leading up to it, uh, Liberty City was very rough. Um, a lot of violence, um, death, drugs, and I was experiencing exposed to that as a child uh, within my own family as well. And so when I um when I I I pushed through everything, I got to college um and I was working, like I was still trying to figure out what path I wanted to take. So I was just working at like Home Depot and Chili's. But then um, my sister had got into a a rough predicament in life. She ended up in a shelter and I found myself uh angry or just feeling upset that I wasn't in a position to be able to help her. And so I said, um, what can I do to help my sister, but also something that would propel the dreams and goals that are kind of like starting to form in my mind. And then I think the most important thing was um, also what can I do so my family going forward never would be put in this situation? Because this was... um. I don't know if this is the right term, but it was historical. Um, it wasn't just my generation, my mom's generation. It wasn't the best economic situation. And I didn't want that to continue. Uh, so when I thought about what could do that, for some reason, the military popped up. I have some people in the military in my family, but I didn't really have a connection with them. But that was just a thought that came into my mind. Um, and also around that time was when I had started to do yoga and I did want to, um, in some kind of way, utilize that in order to propel my life forward. Um, when I was speaking about like the little passions that were growing in my mind. So I figured uh, I can join the military because after looking into it, I saw people in the military seem to have a stable family. They seem to have um, world experience, not just because I had never been outside of Florida or Miami at the time. And so all of those thoughts of pretty much wanting to better, to better my life and my future and also my family's life. And that's what the military came to me as. Nice. 
Amazing. And so this is, did you already graduate from university at this point, or is this kind of like in your last year or so of university that you started to think along this line? It was after I had graduated, probably. Um, so I graduated uh, college in 2012, and then I joined the military in 2017, so like five years. So I had stayed in the same state, uh, University of Florida, go Gators. Nice. I, I went there, there too. For... Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. O only for a year. So I can't clean the full four, but <laughs> well, I amazing. was there for too long. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> I know. Amazing up there. That's cool. I'll ask you more about that later, but that's, that's awesome. Very good. Yes. Good job. So yeah. I, um, I was five years out of college and in those five years, like I said, I had worked at Chili's Home Depot mm -hmm. um, and still trying to find what's the next step, what to do with the degree that I had. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because sometimes uh, I feel like I'm, I'm 50 now. I'm a little like out of touch with coming out of college and the challenge that that is with uh, finding a job. So you had your degree in psychology, but did you have an, at that? Did you entertain the idea of becoming like a personal psychologist and doing like talk there? Well, and sociology. Like, oh, sociology. I'm so sorry. I totally mixed up professions. Yeah, it's in there. They Sound similar. No, there's it's a big difference. Close. I, I, that's my mistake. Thank you for correcting me. Is so, I guess a good point. Where do you go with the so sociology degree? What is the typical? There's, what's the typical thing that people jump to? Uh, social work. Yeah. Teaching. Yeah. Uh, it's very similar to like a a standard degree where you could get, um, you could, um, have an introdu introductory level job. Uh, anywhere uh, it's not as specific you know as like electronic engineering or electrical engineering yeah. sorry yeah. so uh I knew in my mind I knew that those were some of the paths people could take uh but personally I wasn't interested in social work because I knew that's a very hard like the type of stuff you have to deal with I know I personally had to deal with social workers based on my upbringing. So that wasn't a position I wanted to put myself in. Mm. I didn't think I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and if I'm being honest, I hadn't in my immediate family, I hadn't experienced somebody holding a professional job. So I had to overcome the idea that I was only supposed to work at McDonald's, Walmart, Publix, yes. um, and stuff like that. So uh, that could have been a reason too why I didn't pursue something on a higher level. Yeah. But typically, um, those are some of the types of fields. Or people go on and continue in school for a higher degree, and uh, that'll open you up for stuff. And I guess you could also be a part of like studies of populations and contributing to data for that. Yeah. Um, but all of that was both not my interest level, and again, I was a little intimidated to enter the real workforce. I understand. Did you, and then, so, you, okay, I'm going to go military and you're a Marine, correct? Yes. How did you decide Marine? So me being a Marine is actually heavily related to my yoga journey. So when I was, a uh, when I was, after I got out of college, um, and again, I had been running for a club team while I was there. Uh, one of the things that I thought was cool following track and field was like um, professional athletes and how nice they looked and the the pictures that they took. And uh, it's a little shallow, but I'm a big fan of like a certain brand. And so I was like, oh, it'd be cool to work for that brand. And I was like, but I'm not fast enough to actually get sponsored by them. But I was like, what can I do? I was like, I probably could take good photos. So then I started um uh, doing poses and taking pictures of myself, which was the beginnings of my Instagram. Um, and that's when I got more into yoga uh, as a, as an actual like practice. And once I was um, doing that, I was like, I think I could really get uh, far with this. And I think I had to take some good photos, but I wasn't being noticed. So I was like, I need to grow my following. And I thought, what if I, uh, along with, you know, helping my family, I was like, what could I do that would grow my following? What population that I could become a part of that would really um, propel me forward or give me the support I need to get out there? So 
I thought military. And then when I thought what would be impressive, I thought Marines, because in my research, I had learned the Marines is the toughest branch. Uh -huh. um, so that kind of drove, you probably could tell in any decision, I put a lot of thought into it. But that's, that's kind of what drove me to think um, the Marines, because I felt like it had the most esteem and the most challenge, and it would really um, propel my my platform. And something else that I, I didn't mention, um, it was not only to like be a part of this brand that I was a really big fan of, but um, in my experience in college, even though I successfully graduated, it was really tough. And I had, you know, I pulled on certain things to inspire me. And I found this one inspirational speech speaker, his name was Eric Thomas. So I listened to him and he incorporated sports and different things into his speaking. And I was like, wow, I would really like to be like him and like motivate and inspire and use sports um, as a way to motivate and inspire. And in particular, I would like to inspire people who came from where I came from. Um, and when I thought about coming from there, when I was there, who inspired me, it was people who made these huge accomplishments, people who are a part of this particular brand. So it was a big story that I put in my head that if coming from where I'm from in Miami, I could uh, accomplish this big feat of getting signed to this major athletic company and just accomplish something really grand, it would, I could go back, use the tools that I use to accomplish that and speak to people where I'm from. Um, that's pretty much everything I was thinking in my mind. And I thought, oh, the Marines would get me there. Yeah. It would be impressive for people um, to know and they yeah. have a big following. It is impressive. That's so inspirational. I love hearing this. I, I have a, um, a Marine who comes to practice each morning, oh, wow. he's retired or um, he's not in active service anymore. And uh, so I told him I was getting ready to talk to you today. And I said, what do I need to know about the Marines? Cause I'm, you know, I'm going to interview somebody who's in the Marines. And, and he's like, well, <laughs> he said, you're a Marine until you die. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. And he, and I, I, so on that level, do you feel like that ethos that you, when you went into the Marines, that, that you really got inspired by that? Does that something that you carry with you? Do you feel that way currently? I do because, um, when you like the instant, like when the instance you said he was a Marine or he's a Marine, I knew that he, he knew who you were interviewing. There are certain things that they teach us, uh, certain you could say like one word oorah to someone or it's funny but kill <laughs> certain things that we have that instantly we would know um there's a shared experience the way the 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 marines the marine corps especially teaches you and instructs you and builds you up we all we're all taught the same way but not anyone outside of it will understand the principles the policies the procedures so it could be someone who's 70 years old. There's still some elements that we still practice today that we share. So I definitely felt that. And anytime there's someone who's a Marine, there's just uh, where we, we do have our individual distinctions, but there's always something that um, you know that you share with them, mm -hmm. something you could tell them that they will understand. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. You know, they'll understand you. They may not understand all of you, but they understand this, what would be, have become a big aspect of your life. You both understand it. That's so cool. I have so much respect for that. Did, um, what was boot camp like for you? So I, um, I'm 35. I went into boot camp at 28 on the average people go probably 17, 18, maybe 23. Yeah. So I was older. Um, but I also had a background in sociology psychology and psychology. So that played a big role um, because boot camp is training. You train people from all walks of life to become the same as I was saying. So there are certain uh, practices, certain things that are done in order to get people on the same page per se. So it was challenging, um, but I was fortunate to have an understanding that prepared me. That's cool. Uh, a maturity and an understanding that prepared yeah. me. That makes sense. 
Did you ever have any interactions with uh, the people that you were training with that involved yoga? Did you talk about yoga or were you, did you need to be shy about yoga? I would imagine that some military personnel feel positively toward yoga and maybe some might say, whoa, that seems like crazy stuff. What is that? So I'm curious what your experience was and your process of conveying your passion for yoga in that environment. So wherever I go, I always end up um, expressing myself through yoga because I sh I always am practicing it. I'm always stretching. I'm always, you know, I, I it's a part of how I maintain my health. So um, every night um, before workouts, I would be, uh, I, I always just refer to it as stretching. I would be stretching or practicing. So, and I have a high level of flexibility. So it always drew attention to me. So uh, there would be people who would have questions, who would want to, uh, there was other at that time, we're recruits, not Marines yet, because we're still uh, in training. Other recruits who want to be as flexible. And surprisingly, uh, we actually practice yoga as a group. Like they brought someone in who could teach it to us. Wow. Uh, the Marine Corps is very evolving. So uh, in the past, there was a focus on fitness, physical uh, practices, running, lifting, carrying heavy things. And just like how... Uh, professional sports organizations are evolving and realizing stretching is important. Uh, we're also learning that stretching is important. So they would bring in, there were sessions usually on Sundays in boot camp. Those were more relaxed times where the training kind of uh, died down and it was more about centering yourself, uh, however was comfortable to you. They would bring in people to stretch us before major um, like workouts or hikes where we were going to do miles, they were bringing people to stretch us. Uh, so it was definitely something that was embraced. Um, and the Marine Corps is an institution, but it's also run by people. So as people are coming into the institution uh, who have their own practices and as they're raising in the ranks, they're making the rules and regulations and um, allowing people to take part in things that in the past they wouldn't. So all that to say, the Marine Corps is evolving as the people within it are evolving and uh, more and more people are practicing yoga to include those in the Marine Corps. So it's something that's accepted. I never felt um, like cast out or awkward just because of it. It was embraced. That's so great to hear. Amazing. So mm -hmm. then you, you complete your training, you be officially mm -hmm. become a Marine. Yes. What happened next? So after I completed my training, I actually got stationed at something called a Marine Expeditionary Unit. So it's a, a unit in the Marine Corps that usually travels by ship to different countries. So I was fortunate to be able to go to all, to all these different countries. And I actually um, achieved a major dream in my yoga journey. So one of the things that inspired me when I talk about being a part of a brand and um one in the model, I saw these like amazing pictures of people doing yoga, like in the mountains or uh, like just in these, these really nice backgrounds. So when I, whenever we would port our ship or, you know, landed somewhere, I would uh, make sure I had my yoga outfit and I would go take pictures. Mm -hmm. um, there's some beautiful pictures I took in the mountains of Oman. Um, there was some um, really, I really like these pictures because I had on my, uh, my camouflage uniform in the desert of, I believe it was Jordan. Um, so I, after boot camp, I, I, I got to go back to expressing myself through yoga. And I took cool. um, one of some of the most amazing, and it's actually my profile picture in the sunflower, sunflower uh, fields of Spain. <laughs> I went and took some um, pictures and those were some great memories because sometimes people visit other countries and they want to uh, eat and experience the food uh, or go shopping, which I don't mind doing that. But I love that I experienced it uh, through yoga. I got to express, and those are like great memories. And it broke a barrier in my mind because as I said, I hadn't been out of Miami and now I'm in a whole nother country. That's so cool. Um, and so it was, it was a, a great experience after boot camp. That's amazing. So then when and you're a mom now yes yes wow. I have a two almost three-year-old 
a daughter? Yes. And when uh, did you, what's the timeline from when you got back from that journey to motherhood? So after my second deployment, so I got on, we deployed on a ship um, for six months, had a break, and then we deployed and went to Spain where I took my sunflower pictures and I met my daughter's dad in Spain. And then I had her later that year. Um, and so I, I've had different, since starting my yoga journey, I have been in so many different places. And one of the challenges has been maintaining it, uh, maintaining the practice, maintaining my fitness. So motherhood was another idea or another challenge of how do I maintain my yoga? Um, how do I maintain my fitness? And um, I, it was a challenge, but I ended up figuring out like I have the photos that I took where I still um, did my posing, did my pictures. And so it was a, it was a transition, but being able to maintain it helped me to have a solid foundation and uh, taking on, so I was a college student. I was a Marine. Now I'm a mom, but through all, all that, I guess my center, my foundation, I still was able to be the person who could do yoga, the person who could stretch, who could take um, amazing pictures. And that's something that I hold on to because when going back to the idea of the best that I can be, in my mind, you, these things are all phenomenal accomplishments. That's the best uh, that I have to offer. And I'm always striving to maintain that. Um, so becoming a mom, but still being able to do the things that I feel are my skill or my gift uh, has really helped me not to lose myself. Mm, amazing. Yeah. Parenting is challenging. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm nodding. <laughs> it uh, is. Yes, yes. And you're kind of, I mean, three-year-old at three is a pretty exciting age and it's a very active age. Mm -hmm. What's something that you're noticing that she's doing now that really inspires you or, or makes you really proud to be a mom? I, so I stretch every night. Um, I, and I do it every morning and I started to notice now that one day she came on, on the, and joined me. And she was like doing her own poses. And I'm like, how do you know that? How do you learn that? And then it's funny that if like, if I just follow what she's doing, she does a lot of the poses that I do myself, which I guess maybe from watching me, yeah. but um, I think that's the, and I want to start like doing more with her at the same time. But I think that's the, the most, my, most amazing thing. Um, that I'm noticing so far, like, oh, she really is paying attention or this <laughs> is something that a journey that we can share That's and so not cool. just me. Amazing. I hear you. I hear you. It's, I, ha I have two children as well. And I'm constantly just amazed, just in awe of, of how great it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so what is your role currently? You're in the Pentagon. You're literally in the Pentagon right now. Mm -hmm. And this interview will end. What is your role like the rest of the day to day? What does your job look like? What does your day to day job look like? Fortunately, uh, today my job is done, but uh, full circle, <laughs> moment, I actually work on the social media team for the Marine Corps. Wow. Uh, so oh, the headquarters is located in Washington. Uh, the mm -hmm quarters for the Marine Corps. So um, I'm actually building on my skill set that I uh, started when I started my yoga journey. So um, personally, it has helped me in my personal growth, but professionally, everything that I applied in my yoga pictures and practices for my Instagram, those uh, skill sets, those things that I learned about social media, I'm applying them where I'm working now. So it's been like a... Um, a constant present, never That's, ending present. That is so cool that it's evolved into that. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. I'm looking at your, your profile and, um, that is, that is so cool. I, I did notice though that you act as a recruiter. Is that correct? So I, when I joined the military, I joined as a photographer 
And when, um, in my previous duty station, I was a photographer for a recruiting unit. So I wasn't an official recruiter, but I assisted them with um, creating content and um, being a part of events that would help them with recruiting. Uh, and it was all, so my job is called communication strategy. So I was just using the different uh, marketing tools to help them with the recruiting effort. Amazing. What is the general consensus currently on the challenge of getting people to join the military? Are we in a good place in the United States or is it really challenging right now? What is the overall feeling? The overall feeling is just like any other thing, um, the world is evolving, people are evolving, and the military as a whole understands that. Um, and But the Marine Corps stands in particular is that although people are evolving, we're still looking for that reliable resource, that reliable source. So there's different outlets, different jobs that weren't available before that people would love to have or would like to have. And the military is starting to offer that. Um, but also the, we still have those jobs that uh, were foundations that people um, in the past were looking to take on. And I think in general, what I've learned in my experience with Marine Corps recruiting is that the Marine Corps offer, offers stability uh, in the sense that, um, yes, we've evolved, but we're still the same Marine Corps that has won those battles in the past and having that capacity to keep us forward. Because we do want change, but we don't want something to change so much that it loses the foundation of what it was. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah. We know that the world is changing and we're trying to change with it, but still be reliable to what the world needs. Oh, that's a good one. That brings up, that's a good, that's a good point. Was your family, when you told them, say like, I don't know if, if um, like what part of your family is together. And, but when you told your family, I'm going in the Marines, were you met with um, apprehension or were you met with positive uh, support? Um, when my family, I met, I was met with positive supports because at this point I had started my yoga journey, started my Instagram, which is the biggest device I use to communicate my yoga. Um, my family had seen my products, um, the pictures that I was taking, how flexible I had become. And, um, when I started that journey, that was the first thing that I did was kind of, that was kind of out there. Uh, away from the norm of what they typically did. And when they saw how successful and how um, well I did at that, the military, they were just like, well, if that's what you, we trust you. If that's what you're doing, we believe that you're fully capable of it. That's... I had overcome so much wow. already wow. and shown what I could do. So huh. have you ever read um, David Goggins? David Goggins? Any of his I think books? I have. He's so inspirational. He was in the is it Outliers. Uh his first book is Can't Hurt Me. Okay. And yeah, he's he was in the Navy SEALs and Oh uh, yes. And he's just just I think he got awarded like the fittest man in America like a year or two ago. Like he's just crazy. I think I did see that. Physical Someone else fitness. was telling me about it. Super inspirational story, like yours. Super yeah. inspirational story. It's so cool to hear all this. What, um, you, you, you said that you grew up with a Christian background. I did as well. Was there, how are you able to have both of these practices, Christianity as a religion and, or as a spiritual philosophy and yoga be compatible with one another? I believe wholeheartedly they are. I don't see any challenges. Um, sometimes I get maybe push back from people that are Christian that might say, you know, isn't that yoga stuff kind of anti-Christian or not Christian? I'm curious what your um, experience has been in this arena. That's a great question because in my own practice of yoga, I've not only had that question, um, standing as an outlier in the sense of being a Christian who practices yoga. At the time when I started my journey as a Black woman, there wasn't a big population who practiced yoga. So um, 
I had both of those things and questions coming at me and I embraced it because it, I wanted to use my practice to be a part of conversations to show not only that you could come from Miami and do a certain thing, but that you could be a black woman, that you could be a Christian and do a certain thing. And I was, um, it's been hard moving from place to place to con to find like a consistent church home. But before I joined the military, I was heavily involved in a church where I, I went to college. Um, and so when I didn't necessarily get face-to-face -face pushback about uh, what I was practicing, um, but sometimes there was posts that people would reshare if I was on Facebook. And actually recently, um, there was this big conversation about Christian yoga or yoga being against Christianity. And I decided to chime in to the conversation because with my friends, I think I had a voice and I had a, I felt like I had, a, I'm lost for the word, but I felt like it was my place to take a stand on it. But how I see it, um, and it's kind of why when I talk, I interchange yoga and stretching because as a foundation, yoga to me is stretching, um, but it's intentional. So you put purpose to it, not only in the parts of your body that you're stretching, but I think the biggest thing is what you're focusing on, the meditations. And when you go into Christianity, uh, the Bible talks about meditations, um, about what you focus on. Uh, faith is about what you focus on. And so I like to say that I practice Christian yoga because my practice, um, what I like to focus on, what I like to instruct people about is, you know, faith-based stuff or meditating to like on positive things. So I think when I wrote, wrote the post on Facebook, one of the bigger points I made is like, it's about what you focus on when you're in the pose. It could be this other religion, it could be this other God, or it could be whoever you choose to focus on, or it could be nothing at all because you're trying to decompress. So the way that I, um, I just use myself as, a, as an example and try to be that example that you could exist in that space without losing who you are. And people having known me as a Christian before I started practicing yoga and seeing that I still am that person, I think it adds to the conversation for them. Yeah. Well said. <clears throat> I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I think it's important. I think it's we important. We have so much in common. <laughs> I, I think it's important to talk about that. I've mm -hmm. gone through, I had my own little phase where I moved away from faith and now I'm kind of returning back and and um I think that the two can be blended together beautifully and that they don't necessarily have to you know not get along I think it's possible that it can be a harmonious mm -hmm. junction there so that's cool to hear that that you're able to convey that and I also it's also nice to hear that you really didn't you haven't really gotten like a ton of pushback you know what I mean mm -hmm. like I don't yeah so um, that's always really good to hear. What um, oh, I I guess I I want to ask you just I I, I want to ask you this question. If you don't want to go down this track, I am completely okay with you just saying no, thank you. Let's not go there. But um, this morning I was talking with my marine, the person who comes and practices, and um, I I brought up that recently I had somebody start bringing inf information to me about like intervention and relationship to uh, our country intervening in other countries, like, and, and obviously we do. And so I wondered as a military personnel, do you ever have questions about like, if you disagree, I guess, let me kind of go back to where I was asking him this question, then I'll present it to you. This morning I said, okay, so he was mentioning having experience of putting his boots on the ground. And, and my question was like, did you ever have any moral dilemma about the role that you played? And in this response, it was like, no, because my duty was to be there for my fellow servicemen. So my own, my main objective was to keep everybody safe. And it wasn't like I was thinking, we weren't thinking about 
like when you're told to go, you go. Like it's not like you don't question it. And I'm just, I just want to ask this question and I hope it's not being too, I want to be respectful, but have you ever questioned anything and, and had challenge with recon- reconciling your role in the military and our role as our government, like in, in intervention with other countries? Do you have any feelings or thoughts about that? Um, I think I would agree with his perspective, but it sounds like he's had more experience in, uh, he, he's had more combat experience possibly. Uh, usually when people say boots on the ground, meaning he probably went to maybe a, a country where we were in conflict with, I have not personally had that experience, um, working in photography and communications, um, There's not a lot of times where my role personally uh, has a big influence on um, some of the conflicts, Uh, but I think I think his stance is one that is pretty. um, I think that I would have the same thing because yes, we're fighting for a bigger cause, but we also have to look at the small picture of. we have the people who we've worked with, who we've uh, been training alongside, and we just have to trust um, from a spiritual sense. I kind of lean on that, trust that where I've joined and what I'm a part of, um, the right things will happen. Uh, But I can't say that I have, um, to a large extent, really made decisions or choices besides joining that have influenced like the conflict, but I think, um, I understand you just have to focus on the best. Yeah. (laughs) Good point. I, sometimes I think too much, like maybe, maybe I I, I I might need to join them. I might need to join the Marines actually. And I mean, (laughs) it's definitely a good question for the discipline and on another element in that realm. Um, what, I'm curious what type of yoga styles you have encountered because, um, I, I've been involved in Bikram yoga and I've also trained and practiced in Ashtanga yoga. And both of these styles have been criticized for being militaristic that because there's like, when I trained with Bikram in, in California, it was like, you put your toes on the line, your toes aren't in front of the line, your toes aren't behind the line, your toes are on the line. There's no questions. You don't ask questions. And it's very regimented and it's very sequenced and very structured. And and same with the Shtanga. There's there's such an incredible structure. And so when I was speaking with the fellow of the Marine this morning, he's like, that's what I love about it. And it works oh. really well with my mind because of the structure and that there is structure. And I can really relate to the structure. Can you share a little bit about your own personal experience with your own yoga practice? and structure and how that relates to what you've uh your training in the military i would say that i never thought of it like that the comparison i know in in my own practice there are certain things that i'm particular about uh just because i thought that it would be the best way to get the most out of the position or pose uh, in terms of fully stretching your muscle but i've never been Um, heart set only if I feel like it's not as beneficial and I feel like um, in my role in the military I'm kind of the same way Uh, the military in general the marines yes we're structured we're set because that's how you get that unity that's how you get you know uh, two is better than one Uh, uh, I think And the Bible even talks about like a cord, a tight cord is stronger than. So that's where we get our strength from. But there's room to be yourself, be flexible. And I've always, that was one of the things I was afraid of in joining the Marines. I thought I would lose my creativity, individuality, but I've found a way in this space to still be that. And I think in my own practice, I let people uh, do that as well. And I try to do that. Um, I, I'm not too stringent unless, like I said, it would harm you, but I, I've never thought of it. That's a, a pretty, I think the, the only style that I've really been exposed to, is it vinyasana? 
Mm -hmm. is that the right way to say it? I I think I've um, went to a couple of those. um, And I wanted to try hot yoga, but I would say my practice leaves room to be different different and to be creative. Like one time I used to, when I was in North Carolina, I was stationed at Camp Lejeune. I taught yoga at a boxing gym to like some boxers. And so I, um, I would play like hip hop music. And so, cause I wanted them to know yoga isn't just like this particular image of someone you could, however you normally are, you could be that and do yoga. So, um, There's structure, but there's also flexibility. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. That's sometimes the critique on the structured styles I find is, is people, you know, think, well, where is that creativity? Um, but it sounds like you have a good balance of that. You kind of get the, get the sense of both. I, I want to talk to you after you go to your first hot yoga class and to see what you think, <laughs> but try, try to find like one of those hardcore ones where they really like beat you up a little bit. I'd oh my goodness. I don't know now. <laughs> there's not many it's funny because i don't know how much of the history that you know about bikram but at some point he left the country and so there was this like he kept a really strict kind of rule set amongst all of the studios that were under his umbrella and then once he left the country a lot of that kind of strictness has started to like dissolve a little bit and like, there's a lot of parts of the strictness that I think is so great. And I learned so much from, but there's a lot of part of the strictness that I also think was, wasn't very kind for those that were, had experienced trauma. You know, it was a mm. little, do you, what do you, what do you think in relation to when you hear about like trauma sensitive yoga and, and say in relation to, I know a lot of people that do come back from combat have experienced PTSD and different challenges. Um, what are your thoughts on the role of of um, taking a trauma informed perspective versus kind of like just like that? Stop being a baby, toughen up, you know that type of stuff. What what are your thoughts there? Um, I'm extremely supportive of trauma informed yoga. I actually did a little bit of reading on it. I have to finish up my reading, um, but I think it can definitely be relatable um, because I don't think the toughen up um and get over it I don't think that's beneficial at all um because again it just or it just makes people hold it in which is what they did in order to main, maintain or get through whatever they experienced and I I was looking into it because I know although not on the level of combat veterans I do have my own trauma in life that I went through and I do utilize yoga in order to help me um, overcome that. And I definitely think it could be beneficial in teaching people to sit with themselves, sit with them thought, sit with their thoughts. Um, so I'm extremely supportive of that. And I think that would be my, I would love to expand, um, and become, um, more informed on it and actually kind of be a teacher of it myself. Cool. If you could go back now to your, childhood self what what would you tell yourself now knowing what you know and you know you've you've been able to really go for it and pursue your dreams but when you mentioned like how hard you were on yourself in relation to like writing essays and so obviously you've had to overcome a lot of self-esteem challenges what sort of advice would you give um, your childhood self, knowing what you know now? I actually have this conversation with myself, like probably every few months and I remind <laughs> cool. myself. Yeah. Um, I would tell my younger self that, um, because when I was young, I think the biggest trauma, not the biggest, but one of the things that really affected me was, um, and it happens to a lot of people, but at the time it was a big deal. I was made fun of like, very hardcore and it really affected my self-esteem because it, I was coming from a home we didn't have lights we didn't have hot water we barely had food or clean clothes and then I was going to school and people were just tearing down my self-esteem and I wasn't a part of a family that was very like affectionate so I didn't have positive affirmation coming from a lot of places so it felt like I never was able to completely stand up Um, and 
at that age, when it was happening to me, I remember being on a bus one time and like literally everybody on the bus was like coming to my seat and making fun of me. Um, and I told myself to like, you know, just don't show it and just, you know, just don't pay attention to them. And um, I would keep that same advice. But in that moment, it was just something I was seeing to get me through. But I would tell myself to really know not to pay attention to them. And also on another level um, oh, yeah. that, cool. you know, sometimes we're a target because there's something special about us. And I think when I was younger, I felt that kind of belief that there was something special about me, but I guess I didn't have an understanding that whether spiritual or however, that would put a target on me for adversity and challenges. Um, but I would tell myself to not pay attention to what other people say about you in terms of how you look or what you can accomplish and to just believe and do it. Love it. <laughs> I still tell myself that now because yeah. coming from, you know, going to all these different uh, stations and countries and being, you're around different people and you have to know, you you sometimes question, who am I supposed to be? And especially if who you are is not the same as other people, but I constantly remind myself of what I would say then because it would be the same thing I have to tell myself now to like, just be your best self and whoever that is and don't worry about what other people have to say because you know some of those same people are doing less than what you're doing now not to down them so it's your journey and I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned as an adult that nourishes the inner child in me is in your darkest moments you know who's really going to be there whose words are going to help you. So you're holding on to these things or what people will think or what people will say, but you're going to be held accountable for your decisions and choices. You have to stand in that moment. Um, and then my favorite quote that I live on is like, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope I'm messing up, but I would hope that I use um, like every bit of talent that you gave me and I will have nothing left is pretty much what it says and I think about that so it's like be that person use everything that you have and if something that you're facing is limiting you in that sense you, you know overcome it just don't think about it like be the person you want to be it doesn't really matter those people aren't going to be there because mm -hmm. you're going to move <laughs> oh my gosh as you were saying that and you brought up the school bus incident I had a flashback of my own school bus incidents. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was telling myself what you were saying. That's, that's perfect. I think you're right. I love the way you broke that down. It's so powerful. It's crazy, isn't it? Those, those mm -hmm. incidents had such profound effect, right? Like it was so intense mm -hmm. and so hard when people are like that. Mm -hmm. And we made it through somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. It is a miracle. It's amazing. What, um, what do you do a lot of visualization? Obviously I love that you brought up that you connected with the watching of the Olympic athletes and like when they were like setting up for track and you, they would like pan in with the camera really close and you could see their mouth moving. You were able to actually pick up that. Some of the people were saying like, you, you could hear their mantra. You could hear like what they were, or you could see it. You can make them re maybe read their lips. And I, I didn't, I was wondering, I, I guess the other thing I picked up on too, is like when they would put the camera on people and they're getting ready to run, like they're the ability for folks to like put their eyes in one place, mm -hmm. like rock their body side to side and just not move their focus. Like to have that kind of like just watching that whole preparation process for me was so inspirational. I'm stoked that you noticed it as well. Like that you were like, <laughs> that was so cool. Um, what do you, what do you then vision for your future? It sounds like you spend time focusing on your dreams and your goals. Like you put a lot of effort into this, where do you have the dream of like fulfilling a full career with the military and being able to like retire from the pension and, or whatever you would receive from doing a long-term service? Or are you, what, what is your dreams and goals currently moving forward? I still have the dreams that I had when I started, um, because for me, 
those were like those were my true dreams um these are I'm still stepping towards them I haven't I've accomplished um great things I'm still being the best that I can um and I still want to do those things partly because like I really think it would be cool um I really think it would be like a top level accomplishment of me utilizing all the skill sets that I have, the path that I have, the platform that I need in order to reach back and give back to who I want. So I would still love to be like a um, a professional or a brand ambassador. Um, I would love to be a motivational speaker um, and sharing my experience in the military and throughout life and what tools and, that I use to overcome. And I would love to um, be a yoga instructor for either a college or professional sports team. Uh, I think those are my goals. Um, and having a family, uh, the balance is, I would like to do it in a way that will provide stability for my family now and also my future family. I think the military definitely sets me up and it definitely sets a good example for my daughter. Um, but it is still the military. There is still a part of the structure that kind of uh, limits me all the way. So I still have about three more years on my current contract. And after that, I'll see. I've been fortunate to still be who I want to be as well as a Marine. Um, and we'll see after when those three years are coming closer, what else I would like what or where I would want to go but my dreams now overall to be the best person I can be when I got to this new job at the Pentagon they asked me what are your goals and I was like to apply myself um, and be my best um, at, at this task and in this role and I, I really meant that because um, I've had some lags in life and uh, um, unfortunate challenges that kind of had me like uh, be less than I wanted to be, but now I'm back on as my my pivot, as some people would say, and I would love to just apply myself and be my best. So, but those are my main goals. I would love to be like a ambassador, a brand ambassador, um, to give more power to my story um, and to reach back to my community. Kind of like you were saying about if more people saw people doing yoga, they would want to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I already feel like you've achieved those goals though, because you are, <laughs> you're a motivational speaker right now, right? There's people listening to you. you yes. Are, you are being the best you can be clearly in the moment. I love what you said about, and, and I want to bring it up again and just make sure I clarify. So I understood you right. And please, please help me if I got it wrong, but when you, at the end of your life, when you, you know, when you, like you said, like when I come and I have like that end of my life experience that I use, mm -hmm. did you say, did you say like you wanted to use everything that you had, like make sure you used everything you had. So you use it all up. Is it my understanding correctly? Like, like use the energy that you have, like use the power that you have and not like not use it and then come mm -hmm. to your end and go like, I didn't use it. You got to use it up. I like that mm -hmm. idea, like actually use it up, try to, maybe it's unlimited and it will never get used up, but almost mm -hmm. imagine that it is a limited resource. You better use it all up before. <laughs> yes. I love I it. I always think like if I'm like it. older and then, or like, as I get older and I'm saying, I used to do this, or I yeah, used to yeah. be able to do yeah. that. Yeah. And I feel like that would haunt me. Like I know naturally, or at some point, you know, I give myself grace. I won't always be able to do certain things, but I don't want that to be because I didn't try to, or I gave yeah. it up. I let yeah. it go. Um, cool. So cool. I think that's what drives me a lot. Well, everybody listening, please go follow Tawana at, and I'm, let me just make sure I have your handle spelled correctly. It's at TH33, best I can be. Yes, the best cool. I can be with two threes, which cool. it's just and, random. But. And and is it that is the is there a T H E or is it just T H three? It's T H three three. Cool. I just want to make sure I had that right because you. Yes, I awesome. just that just came to me. Thank uh, you. Thank you. One day. Yeah, 
I love it. I just want to make sure, because when I said the, I just want to be really clear so that everybody can find you super easy. And the link is in the description. So it's super easy to just go down and click it and you're going to find it. You're super easy. Is there anything that I missed or something else you want to share? I feel like you covered so many great bases of motivation and inspiration. And so I'm really thankful for that. Thank you, Tawana, for taking time out of your day. I know you have a really busy schedule or Wait, maybe the rest of the day you said you have free. So enjoy, obviously enjoy the rest of your, your freedom today. But is there anything else? My motherhood. That, your mother, yeah. That, <laughs> is that freedom? Hmm. No, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh what uh is there any anything else you'd like to share before we close? Um, I just want to thank you for this opportunity uh, and for reaching out to me. And for anyone listening, I would just or watching, I would just say like to be your best, to not give up, and whatever your best is. Because your best is not, it's so cliche, but your best is not my best. Um, my best is not an Olympic athlete's best, um, but it's the best that I have and it's good enough. And for you to know that too, like if you only run five minutes, that's as much as you could do. Never get, never feel ashamed of your best um, as long as it's your best. If there's some guilt, maybe that's you telling yourself you have more but it's good enough, whatever your best is. So give it to the world. I love it. Thank you, Tuana. Thank you so much. Thank you.